Since we're going into spooky season, I've created a reading challenge for all my thrills and chills seeking friends or just anyone who wants to dip their toes into some seasonal reading. If you participated in the Every Romanticy Challenge, you will pretty much know how this works, but I'm gonna go over exactly how this reading challenge works as well as my TBR and some recommendations as well in this video. Now this is a reading challenge. What that means is it can be done at your own time during whatever time frame you want. I will be giving myself three months to complete it, September, October, November, as those are the months that I feel like I'm reading the spooky seasonal reads. Since this is also up to whatever is challenging to you, the idea is to make it challenging but also something that you can accomplish. Do whatever genres you need to fill this out. I will be mainly reading horror with a few thrillers as those are what I count as spooky reads, but if you want to add in a dark fantasy that works, go ahead and do it. This reading challenge is kind of left up to your own interpretation of what really works for you. There are three parts to it. In step one, you have to read eight books. You read a book for each spooky setting that we've come up with. These are settings we see often in these more dark October themed reads. So we have urban setting, which just means set in a city or town. It is honestly kind of a freebie in my opinion, but I like to have a mix of easy and harder ones on things like this. We have summer camp. We have an isolated setting. This means they're trapped somewhere and they can't get out or they're just like stuck in one room, one place. We have small town, a little bit more niche in the urban setting, but there are so many small town horrors out there. We have a southern setting. The deep south tends to be a setting we see a lot in horror books. We have a classic haunted house story setting. I feel like this is one of everyone's favorite settings to read and there's always new ones coming out, so they should be an easy square. We have a coastal setting. This means kind of set near the water, an island, things like that. There's water incorporated into this. It's set on the coast of something. You're gonna see the ocean. And then we have in the woods. The majority of the book is going to take place in the woods somehow. Now I have to put a disclaimer that if something isn't working for you, change it, stretch it, whatever. As I said, this is a personal reading challenge. There's no discord. There's no reading tracker. Like this is all about what you want to do and we will be sharing them on social media. I do have the Canva link linked down below for you to peruse and make your own. Please make sure to make a copy of this Canva document and don't ruin the master copy for everyone. If one of these settings is not working for you, if summer camp is really not working for you, maybe it's just a camp setting. Maybe it's just a summer setting. Stretch it to whatever works for you. I promise my feelings will not be hurt. It's supposed to be a challenge for yourself. Next is step two in the challenge, which are what we call unlocking prompts. Everything in step two has to match a book in step one. Also, I forgot to tell you that there are no repeats allowed in step one. You have to read eight books. And then step two comes and each of your eight books that you read has to match something in step two. So in step two, we have young adult, a book you didn't buy, new author, novella, diverse rep. It can be any sort of diversity either in the story or from the author. Audiobook on someone else else's TBR. On someone else's TBR, it can be anyone's TBR. It doesn't need to be a TBR for seasonal spooky challenge. If someone has an October TBR come up and you want to steal a book off that, you can. And then we also have new release. As I said, these all have to match something in book one and you have to cross them all off. So for example, if I read both my urban setting and my summer camp setting as an audiobook, I can do that, but only one can count for audiobook. So my urban setting will be my audiobook, but my summer camp has to match something else so maybe I read a novella for that. And then we have step three, which are cover prompts. You do not have to have these match the other books that you've read already, but they can. There are eight cover prompts. These are things that me and my patron saw trending in horror books. I had some help. And they just have to be on the cover of a book that you read. They can be on the cover of the books you read for step one, but they do not have to be. You can read more than just the eight books for this challenge. You could read 16. If you wanted to make it extra challenging, you could have none of these match though. So we have hands. I'm thinking like majority hands on the cover, not just like a person with a hand. But as I said, I don't really care. If you want to just do a person as a hand, that's fine. But when I created it, I was thinking like a pretty predominant hand on the cover. A window, a weapon, an animal, blood, tech, any sort of tech works. An eyeball. Again, I was thinking more likely a predominant eyeball, not just like a person and their eye, but I don't really care what you do. But that's what I had in mind when I created the challenge. And then water. And that's it. After you've done all of those, you've completed the challenge. However, there are a few more things you can do because I had to make bonus challenges. Now these are just things you can find in your books. And again, they can be some of your eight books. They can be your cover prompt books. You can read extra books for them. If you wanna make this challenge extra hard and read one book per every like prompt you have to do, you would be reading 
reading 22 books, so you can do that, but you don't have to. You only have to read technically eight if you plan well. And that's it. Those are all the things you need to do. If you have any questions, let me know down below. I will be happy to answer any of them. I will also have the link to the Every Romantasy Challenge down below because I might have explained it a little bit better there. Maybe? I don't know. Now let's get into the fun part, which is my TBR and some recommendations for you. First up, we have Urban. And for my TBR, I think I'm going to be putting So Thirsty by Rachel Harrison on this list. This also will hit the bonus challenge of vampires for me, and it has a lot of blood on the cover. This is one that I'm really excited to try. This was already on my list of things I want to read, so it worked really perfectly for this spot. I'm assuming it takes place in a city because they have like a night out and stuff. My number one recommendation for this spot, and probably what inspired this spot, is The Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. This was a five-star read for me. This happens within New York. We follow a couple with a new baby as they struggle, and they're offered the gift of a lifetime. They win essentially a lot for a very expensive apartment for very, very cheap and affordable. However, it's not wheelchair friendly and she's in a wheelchair. And there's some sus things happening within this New York apartment, but the New York vibe, the setting really hit me in the right spot in this. So this is definitely urban. Also because I know novella could be hard to hit for a few people. We have Jack and Jill by Keel and Patrick Burke and Sour Candy by Keel and Patrick Burke. These both happen within a city setting. I really enjoyed them. They're both like short stories. I would count them as a novella. If you're looking to to dive into spooky a little bit. I think that they are great places to start since they're so short and they're very atmospheric. Next up, we have Summer Camp. And for my TBR book, I'm putting Heads Bowl Roll. This was recommended to me by Lexi. So I don't know a lot about this book, but I'm excited. It also has blood on the cover and a weapon on the cover for those cover prompts. And for my recommendations to you, I have The Last Time We Lied by Riley Sager. This is a summer camp setting. We essentially follow our main character who goes back to her childhood camp, but as a camp counselor this time. But things happened when she was participating participating in the camp when she was younger and she's starting to remember those things as she is a counselor there this time. I really enjoyed this one. I know Riley Sager is a very hit or miss author and I think this book particularly is a hit or miss one but it is my favorite Riley Sager but also probably the first one I read. Another recommendation is Camp Damascus. Technically not a summer camp but it's close enough in my opinion and if I'm telling you you can stretch it then like go ahead. This follows a very religious town that sends their kids to a conversion camp and sus things are definitely happening. After that, Isolated. And I'm putting Rest Stop for this by Nat Cassidy. This is a short story novella, so this will hit my novella prompt for me by an author I've loved before. I believe we're stuck at a rest stop, which sounds very, very fascinating to me. And I've loved all of Nat Cassidy's books previously. My recommendations for Isolated for you are Near the Bone by Christina Henry. This is a winter horror. We're following our main character who has to decide whether she will run off into the woods to try to escape. But there's something out there that is really terrifying but the thing is she's stuck inside the house with a man who is equally as terrifying so she has to decide which one is the bigger bad. I love 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 this one. Can't recommend it more. In similar vein we have a winter thriller I would recommend which is No Exit. This is my favorite thriller to ever exist. It's very fun. Again we're following a snowed in girl who has to escape the night essentially and also The Stowaway. This is a little bit less isolated than I think people think of because we're not like trapped in a room or something but we are technically trapped on a cruise ship. This follows our main character who was the deciding vote in a jury to let a man go free and she has to live with her decision the rest of her life and when she's on a cruise ship there is a copycat killer and she has to help because she knows more about the case than anyone else. Then we have Small Town and I'm putting on Where He Can't Find You by Darcy Coates. I'm really intrigued by this one. I love Darcy Coates so why not? The first Con in a Cornfield I'm holding up number two because I don't own number one. Definitely can't for this. It happens within a small town. It is a slasher, so we'll hit that serial killer prompt for you. And my favorite YA slasher, it also hits YA. Also, Where He Can't Find You is YA as well. Gallows Hill by Darcy Coates happens within a small town and is a haunted house setting, so it could work for multiple things. It's technically a haunted winery. A lot of Darcy Coates happen within small town, to be honest. And then Black Sheep by Rachel Harrison also is a small town. This follows a cult, essentially. A woman who escaped a cult, and when she gets an invitation to a wedding at this cult, which is really weird to happen because they're not supposed to talk to you once you leave, she decides to go back. It gets a little weird, but I really enjoyed this one. Next up, we have Southern, and off of the recommendation of Lexi and Brie, I'm putting When the Reckoning Comes. And my recommendations for you, I actually really think I really enjoy a Southern setting. The number one recommendation I have for you is Ghost Eaters by Clay McCoy Chapman. Most of Clay McCoy Chapman is actually Southern. Uh, his other book, 
The one that came out last year, which I personally didn't love, is also Southern and Coastal. But this one is Southern and is a five-star read for me. One of my favorite horrors. Essentially, we're following our main character who starts to do a drug that lets you see ghosts. And then we also have the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, which is another horror book that I loved. We're following our main character who thinks a vampire moved in next door and her book club, she tries to convince them all and they are like, wow, we, we gotta kill him. I also want to say Black Sheep is Southern as well. Next up, we have Haunted House and I'm putting We Used to Live Here on this. This is a story that won the Reddit competition for Reddit horror and I've had very, very good luck with the other ones I've read. I've read three and loved them all. So I'm very, very, very excited for this one. My recommendation to you is basically Darcy Coates. Pretty much every Darcy Coates book, there's a few that aren't, but most of them are Haunted House stories. I really, really love Darcy Coates and her writing. I think she's a great place to dive into horror if you've never read them before. My biggest Haunted House recommendation for you is probably Gallows Hill, but another one that I didn't love as much, but I think gets a lot of love is Carol Haunt. After that, we have Coastal, and for my TBR, I'm reading The Vacation by John Mars. This is is a thriller. I don't know much about it, but I have loved John Mars in the past and I would like to continue reading his backlist. This also obviously hits water on the cover. I've kind of been forgetting to tell you those, but obviously this has water on the cover. My recommendation to you is What Kind of Mother by Clay McCoy Chapman. As I said, I didn't really love this one, but it does fit that coastal setting. I also think the stowaway, I would count. It is surrounded by the ocean, so why not count it? But I haven't read a lot of coastal horror. Apparently I need to read some more. So any recommendations? I'd love to have them. And last up we have In the Woods and I will be putting Ghost Camera by Darcy Coates on there. Honestly I found In the Woods a little bit harder than I thought it would be to find things for. I'm not 100% sure they are in the woods. But I like to stay up to date with my Darcy Coates. I'm a little bit behind this year so why not put her on this list more than once? Also believe this is a short story novella so again that would hit novella if I needed it. My recommendation for you is Hunted by Darcy Coates. We follow a group of friends who their friend got lost in the woods and they go looking for them. Again, near the bone, it is winter time. So it's like snowy, but they are technically in the woods. I do hit most of my cover prompts if I follow this TBR. I'm missing tech, so I will have to read something else for tech. And I also know I hit vampires, ghosts, serial killer, but I think I will still need to read cults, cannibals, and mixed media. Cult, I will probably read Clown in a Cornfield 3 for that because it is the the Church of Frendo, so it will probably have a cult in it. But mixed media and cannibals could be a little bit hard, but we'll see what this journey takes me on. If any of you create TBRs for this, if any of you create videos or Instagram stories about this, please, please, please tag me in them. I love to see everyone's progress. If you need some more recommendations, I will have my top 10 horror list right here on the screen for you. And then I also will leave the Ever Romantic Challenge on the screen if you just want to check out how that one was done. You can and still do that one. And if you'd like to leave me a comment, let me know what your favorite prompt was. Or please, if you have any recommendations for anything, leave them down below for either me or other people to peruse. And then if you just want to leave an emoji, leave me a little bat emoji. 